outbreaks and leafy greens contamination. In this video, we are going to teach you the basic information about food safety that you need when working with leafy greens. Always keep in mind that food safety starts in the field. Our company has implemented a good agricultural practices program, also known as GAP. As employees, you are an essential part of this program. The training included in this video will help us understand how leafy greens can become contaminated and how each of us can help protect them from contamination. Let's get started by looking at these foods. What do you think about these dishes? They look good and probably smell and maybe taste very good too. Would you eat them? I would. What do they have in common? They all have been prepared using leafy greens. Do you think it is possible that some of these dishes could make us sick? Any food, regardless of where it was grown, produced, or prepared, in a processing plant, at home, or in a restaurant, can become contaminated and cause illness or hurt people who eat it. Keep in mind that contaminated food could taste, smell, and even look good, but still make people who eat it sick. Here is a concept to remember. When we get sick from eating contaminated food, it is called a foodborne illness. This feeling is different than the feeling you get when you eat too much. That's called indigestion. Foodborne illnesses are often severe and can last several days. Symptoms may include diarrhea, vomiting or dehydration, and some foodborne illnesses may even be fatal. When two or more people become sick from eating the same contaminated food, it is called a foodborne outbreak. An important part of your job is to prevent the leafy greens you work with from becoming contaminated so that they don't become the cause of a foodborne outbreak. A foodborne outbreak can have serious consequences for a food company and its employees. Let's go over a story about a real situation where people got sick and some even died because they ate contaminated food. In 2006, 205 people got sick and four people died as a result of eating contaminated spinach. 104 people were hospitalized and 31 patients developed hemolytic uremic syndrome, HUS, a serious renal complication. The foodborne outbreak was well publicized in newspapers throughout the country. This outbreak had serious consequences for food producers and their employees. Let's look closer at this incident. On September 11, 2006, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, received notice of a foodborne outbreak in Wisconsin. Based on epidemiological studies, public health officials in Wisconsin connected the outbreak with the consumption of bagged spinach. On September 14, 2006, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, FDA, announced that consumers should not eat spinach in bags due to an outbreak caused by the contamination of E. coli O157H7, a potentially deadly bacteria. E. coli O157H7 is a living microorganism. It only takes a few of these organisms to make someone sick. E. coli O157H7 causes diarrhea that is often bloody and can be accompanied by abdominal cramps. Although it isn't known for certain what caused the contamination of the spinach, researchers found the following environmental risk factors that could lead to contamination with E. coli. Presence of wild pigs around the fields planted with spinach. Irrigation wells for the production of spinach were near cattle and wildlife fecal stools. However, no definitive conclusions about what caused the outbreak could be made. This tells us that simple things can mean a lot to food safety. The bagged spinach that caused the problem was grown in California, but it was distributed and eaten by people all over the United States and Canada. This map shows the states where the people became ill, a total of 26. When contaminated food is distributed to a variety of customers, grocery stores, and restaurants, illness may occur in different places and at different times, just as in the spinach incident. Stores and restaurants immediately cleared bag spinach from their shelves and menus. Spinach harvesting and marketing ceased. Consumers around the country stopped buying spinach. Lots of people lost their jobs. 
the industry lost millions of dollars. Even a year after the outbreak, people didn't eat the same amount of spinach as before. The incident was a serious warning for the entire leafy greens industry. Let's think for a moment about what would happen if the news reported that several people became ill after eating contaminated leafy greens from the company you work for. If there was an outbreak caused by leafy greens, people would stop buying and eating them. The implicated leafy greens ranch would close and workers would be laid off because people would not buy the product. So even if you don't get sick, you and your family would be directly affected by a situation like this one. This can be a devastating event for you and the company you work for. The company may close and you may be laid off. Remember that you play a key role in the protection of leafy greens. It is your job to protect leafy greens from becoming contaminated. In this video, we will learn many practices that we need to follow in the field to minimize the risk of leafy greens contamination. Your job is to always follow your company's food safety policies and procedures so that leafy greens are protected from contamination. Following the rules at work means taking care of your job.